Hi everyone, Mr. Voltry here bringing you video 6.2. We're gonna be talking about a mass oscillating on a spring. To do that, we're gonna review the equations for harmonic motion that we talked about in class today, talk about the period of a mass oscillating on a spring, and then talk about the energy of a mass spring system. First, to review the equations that we talked about in class is we sort of made an analogy between simple harmonic motion and rotational motion by looking at just the Y coordinate of the motion. So we look at just the Y coordinate of the motion, it actually looks just like our kind of sinusoidal simple harmonic motion. And by doing that, we also dove into kind of the whole polar coordinates of it all. Um, is If we look at the position X or in the example that we talked about, Y equals the amplitude times the cosine of omega times the time except it doesn't always start perfectly at the zero, zero or whatever position we want to start at. So sometimes we, we have to add in a phi, which is a phase shift to the left or to the right, depending on the initial conditions where it started. Once we have an actual problem, we can just substitute in numbers for the phi, and then it, it, it just uh, simplifies out a little bit. But while we're talking about this sort of theoretically without a specific problem, we have to include the phi. And then if we take the derivative of that, then we get the velocity function. And remember, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And don't forget to also take the derivative of the inside, which is how we get our omega out here. And then one more time, we take the derivative, and that's how we get the acceleration function. So um, this is these are the equations for simple harmonic motion. And in this the, the one really convenient thing about this is that the top equation, the position equation, is on your formula sheet. So we can just take the derivative twice to find the acceleration or once to find the velocity. And the other thing to point out about this is that the A, the amplitude, that's the maximum position. The amplitude times the angular velocity, that's going to be the maximum velocity. And this right here, that's going to be the maximum acceleration. So some of the things that you need to know are where does it have a maximum velocity? Where does it have a maximum acceleration? Where does it have a maximum position? Where are the zeros of all of these functions? Um, so that just relies on knowing the sine cosine functions and, and just being able to think about, well, it's moving the fastest when it's going through its equilibrium position and it has its maximum acceleration when it's farthest from the equilibrium position. Um, so using those equations, we can actually do some pretty interesting things. Uh, let's first look at a mass that is being, that is on a mass spring system, a mass that is oscillating horizontally as it, it's attached to a spring. We could do the same thing vertically. There would just also be force gravity in there. And since force gravity doesn't change, um, then it's, it's, it's actually all the math is still going to work out, but it's just a little bit easier if we look at the horizontal system. So then the only force acting is the force spring, which is equal to, if we remember back to unit two Hooke's law, negative times the spring constant times the displacement, which the negative is really important and good because that makes it a restorative force. It's always going back to its equilibrium position. And it's also good that this is proportional to X because that is one of the conditions for simple harmonic motion is that the restorative force is proportional to the displacement. So uh, since the force spring is the only force in our horizontal system, we can say that using FAM law, the mass times the acceleration equals negative K times X. And then just solving for acceleration, we can say the acceleration equals negative K divided by M times X. This is just all a basic, basically simple rearrangement. And you'll see in a minute why I've written it like this is actually because we have an equation for the acceleration and the position of simple harmonic motion. So since we know that the force of spring puts it in simple harmonic motion, we can substitute in the acceleration and the position, which makes it look a lot worse. But actually, this is good because there's a lot of stuff here that can cancel. I know it looks ugly, but there's a lot of stuff here that we can cancel out. So we have negative on both sides, A, the amplitude on both sides, and this uh, cosine function on both sides. So we can actually cancel all of those out, and we're going to be left with the omega squared, which is the angular frequency squared, which is our analog to the angular velocity, but since we're talking about not velocity, we're talking about frequency, it's our angular frequency squared equals K over M. So this is really good. This is a really important and powerful equation that we can rearrange and use in different ways. Um, so our angular frequency equals K over M, we could rewrite as just if we wanna look at one angular frequency equals the square root of K over M, which if we think back to uh, our last video where we talked about the angular frequency equals two pi over the period, we could find, we can substitute this in for the angular frequency and find that the period equals uh, two pi times the square root of M over K. You'll notice that we had to flip it just in the algebra rearrangement, um, but the period equals two pi times the square root of uh, the mass divided by the spring constant which this is on your formula sheet. Actually, both of these are on your formula sheet. But this one we've already talked about. This is the new equation that's on your formula sheet. And uh, I, I kind of just wanted you to understand where it came from. It came from looking at the forces involved 
um, and then substituting in for the uh, position equations and the angular frequency to solve for the period of a mass oscillating on a spring. If we know the mass of the mass and the spring constant of the spring, we can solve for the period. Now, this is important because you'll notice that in the equation, there's nowhere in there is the acceleration due to gravity. Um, because this equation also applies for a spring that's oscillating vertically, which is just really interesting because you can take the same spring mass system and bring it to the moon and it'll have the same uh, period, which I, I don't know, I just think is really interesting. Uh, and then also the amplitude, it doesn't matter if you stretch it down a little bit or stretch it down a lot, it's going to have the same period. It'll just, um, this would be this period or this period, it, it doesn't matter based on the amplitude. So those are two important things to know about the period of a mass spring system. And so then let me just circle back around because I, I was watching a video and it, and it really emphasized this. So I wanted to emphasize this too. We talked about the conditions for simple harmonic motion in terms of there's that restorative force, always bringing it back to the equilibrium position, and it is proportional to the displacement. But there's actually another kind of more powerful, more broadly used condition for simple harmonic motion. And I wanted to show you this example. So we have our acceleration equals negative K over M times X. And, but we also know that the angular frequency squared equals K over M. So we could rewrite this as the second derivative of the position, basically the acceleration equals negative times the angular frequency squared times the displacement. So this, remember when we were talking about the restorative force is proportional to the um, displacement or, or, or how far you are away from the equilibrium position. And this is the condition written out mathematically. This is the condition that needs to be met to, satisfy, to, to say that something is in simple harmonic motion. So if a problem says show that this object is in simple harmonic motion, you would need to basically prove that this is true, which you can do very easily by doing what we did up above, um, which would get you to this equation. And then you can say, oh, well, since the angular frequency equals K over M, then I can prove that this is true. And therefore, a, a uh, mass spring system is in simple harmonic motion. But you can use this equation to prove it for another system as well. So this is not on your formula sheet, but it's definitely worth memorizing. That's why I put a big yellow box around it. Okay, the last thing that we're going to talk about today is the energy of a mass spring system. And we're going to do that the same way as we're going to make it look really ugly, and then some things are going to magically cancel out. So first of all, the energy of a mass spring system is the kinetic energy plus the spring potential energy, because it's just moving back and forth to the left. And, and some, some things, again, that you need to know is where is kinetic energy the, the highest? That's where the spring potential energy is going to be the lowest. Um, at its equilibrium position, it's moving the fastest. Where is the spring potential energy going to be the highest? Well, that's when it reaches a stop at the very far edge uh, because the kinetic energy there is going to be zero. So those are just some like conceptual things that they like to ask questions about. But if we actually dive deep into the math, if we were to be, be asked solve for the total energy of the system, we could do that. Uh, because we know the equation for the kinetic energy, we know the equation for the spring potential energy. Um, so if we're given all these values, then we can solve for it. But what if we're not given those values? What if we're given uh, a, a, some different values? Well, like I said, we can make this look really ugly and then some things are going to clean up. So we can substitute in for the velocity and we can substitute in for the position, which this doesn't look like it would help at all, but I promise I, it will. So uh, using this very ugly equation, uh, what we can do, we can do a couple things. Uh, well, first, here I have an omega. And I know from what we just talked about that the angular frequency equals, oh, so for now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dist distribute these squares. I'm um, just a squared, omega squared, sine squared, a squared, cosine squared. Distribute the squares. That's going to help us in a minute. And then I'm going to do what I talked about because we know that the omega squared equals k divided by m. So this, obviously, the m's simplify, and we get 1 half times k. So 1 half times k, and now you're probably starting to notice that we have a 1 half times k over here, 1 half times k over here, and also an a squared on both terms. So I can factor all those out. I get the total energy equals 1 half times the spring constant times the amplitude squared times this very ugly function. But thankfully, pre-calculus to save the day, we can use one of our trigonomet trigonometric identities in that sine squared plus cosine squared sine squared of theta plus so cosine squared of theta equals one. And notice that the basically the theta, the thing on the inside of the sine squared and the cosine squared are the same. So we can use this trigonomet trigonometric identity and say that the total energy equals one half times the spring constant times the amplitude squared, which I just think is really cool that you can go and simplify all of that information down to this really easy uh, to use information. So all you need to know is the amplitude, the maximum displacement, and the uh, spring constant, and then you have the total energy of the system.
which makes sense because when it is at its maximum amplitude, it's farthest stretch. That's when the kinetic energy is zero and it is all spring, uh, spring potential energy. So this makes sense. We just set it to where the kinetic energy equals zero and it's all spring potential energy and you get the same answer. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to show you how all the math cleanly gives you this equation. Uh, which this one's not on your formula sheet, but it's worth, uh, you don't even have to memorize it because uh, we can just think where is the spring potential energy, the max, that's when the kinetic energy equals zero, and that's going to give us our total energy. Uh, so this is Mr. Bolter wrapping up video 6.2 on mass spring systems. We're going to do some practice problems in our next class, but for now, go Bears.